Hello, this is Jacqueline. Uh, it is Friday, September 30th, and um, we're actually having really cool weather here. I'm talking about a fall project, uh, autumn, for those of you not in the United States. Here in, here in the U.S., we call it fall for some reason. Um, everywhere, everywhere else in the world, they call it the season autumn, but um, it's just, it's like perfect weather to be talking about a fall or an autumn project with you. So what I wanted to talk to you about today was our new Harvest Blessings kit. And if you could just, if you can hear me and see me, okay, if you could just comment in the comments and just let me know that, that would be great so that I know that, you know, all the technical stuff is, you know, good. Um, yeah, so just comment and say that you can hear me and maybe actually just say in the comments where you are tuning in from and what kind of weather you're having today. Has autumn hit your area yet? Um, my daughter actually lives in Florida and um, Hurricane Ian just went through. So um, they are fine. They just got a lot of rain out of it where they are. But um, fall is also hurricane season down that way. So. Uh, I think that we are good as far as our tech, so I'm just going to keep going. Uh, so as I mentioned today, we're going to be talking about the Harvest Blessings Kit. Um, now, we're going to, we have an early bird special going on, and it's supposed to end on Sunday or Monday. But what happened was um, I had intended on doing a Facebook Live um, earlier this week to show you um, the kit and the project and all that kind of stuff, and you know how things just... Sometimes things happen and the week kind of got away from me and um, it's Friday and I'm just getting around to doing this today. So that's why we're going to extend that early bird special through the middle of next week. We're going to extend it through, um, I think, October 5th, which is next Wednesday. Uh, and it's, it's, you're going to love this project. It's so pretty. So another thing I'm going to be talking to you about today is um, in addition to the early bird sale, we have a special bonus that you will get if you order the kit during this early bird um, week. And also, I'm going to do a little embroidery demonstration for you because this kit features pre-printed panels. And you can really, the panels are really pretty as they are. But if you add a little bit of hand embroidery, I mean, it just adds a little bit of dimension to it, makes it really, really pretty. Um, and plus, here in the Northern Hemisphere, as the weather gets a little bit cooler, it's like perfect hand stitching weather. So I'm going to go ahead and show you our project. So this is the Harvest Blessings Table Runner. And this runner is 18 and a half by 54 and a half inches. So hopefully you can see the whole thing. I don't know if you can see the whole thing or just parts of it at a time. And I just want to point out the really pretty colors in this. There's this really pretty like deep teal and a light orange which kind of reminds me of the little pumpkins um the little i think they call them jackie little pumpkins they're kind of like a light orange um and then this really pretty kind of like a purpley color um here where we live we have this weed called pokeberry or, or i think it's also called joe pie weed and maybe you have it where you are where it's these really pretty purple berries that grow on this big fat stalk and the stalk gets kind of purple um and they're actually very poisonous, the berries, I think, to humans. Um, birds eat them, but I think they're poisonous to us. But um, for me, when I see the poke berries, you know, it just kind of reminds me of fall. And that's what this color, this purpley color in here reminds me of. It's this really pretty berry kind of purpley color. And then it's got four pre-printed panels included in the kit. So we've got this one that says pumpkin season. We've got the little bird with a, with a uh, sunflower. And then we've got the autumn leaves with a little feather. And this one says, leaves are falling, autumn is calling. So that is our Harvest Blessings table runner. Again, 18 and a half by 54 and a half. And the way we've put it together, do you see how the panels kind of float on that cream colored background? So it, it kind of, it's a really neat design once you get it all put together. So I think next I will show you uh, what you get in the kit. And as I mentioned, it's on early bird special this week through October 5th. So I'm just going to open up a kit. This is what you order the kit. This is how it will arrive. Um, we put them in these nice plastic uh, Ziploc bags because sometimes packages get wet or I don't know. I think sometimes 
maybe the postman, it seems like he's kicking him down the street. <laughs> I don't know. Like his arms are full and he's the one falls off and so he just kind of kicks it down the street. I don't know. Don't quote me on that, but the way I've seen some packages come in, I'm just wondering. That's all I'm saying. It's the machinery. It's Or the machinery, does it. Yeah, the machinery. Um, but anyway, so they come packaged in this nice plastic bag. Uh, so you don't have to worry about your fabrics getting damaged or anything on the way. But what you're going to get is you're going to get a printed pattern for making the project. And if you've done my patterns before, you know they are super, super easy to follow along. Lots of full color diagrams. So very easy to follow. Lots of fun to put together. This is so easy. You can do this one in a weekend. Um, so it's September 30th. Tomorrow's October 1st. Um, you can get this done like in just a day or two and have this on your table for the next couple of months right through Thanksgiving. It's perfect for Thanksgiving. Um, you're going to get the really pretty, you get the cream fabric and then you get again that really pretty deep teal, that light pumpkiny orange, that really gorgeous berry color. And I hope that you can really see that berry color um, on, on the camera, on the screen. Um, sometimes, you know, colors are kind of weird on screens, but it is a really pretty berry kind of a purple. And then you're also going to get the pre-printed panels and you get four of them and they're six inches. And, you know, these have a look on them like that you just can't get from say applique or just hand embroidery. I do both. I love machine applique. I love hand embroidery, but you can't, you don't get a look with either of those techniques like you do with these pre-printed panels. And these are my original artwork. So I sketch these out and then um, I either paint them by hand or these I actually did on my iPad with a painting program. So I painted them all in um, on my iPad and then had them printed onto fabric for this kit for you guys. So this is the Harvest Blessings kit. That's what you get. You get all of the fabrics for the top. You get the panel and you, the panels and you also get the binding fabric. Now, the other thing that we have is we have a, we have backing kits available if you would like a coordinating backing and we have them in three colors we have them in the berry purple we have them in the pretty light orange this kind of reminds me of almost like a creamsicle and then this really beautiful gorgeous deep teal color so you're going to get three choices and backings if you would like to purchase the backing separately these are separate uh, and you, we also have the quilt labels. So here is one of the labels on the, we use the teal backing kit for this. And I hope you can see. So what I did was I actually wrote what I wanted my label to say on a piece of paper first to make sure that I had it right. Um, and then I put the label over it on a, on, over the piece of paper with a light box. And I just traced onto it with a permanent Pigma marker. So that's a really, really easy way to do um, your labels. You could also hand embroider them if you wanted to, if you've got time and you want to do that. So the, here's the panel of the uh, labels. So if you want to get the labels, these coordinate, they all coordinate with the table runner. And there are, I think there's nine on here of various sizes and shapes. So you can use one for your Harvest Blessings table runner, and then you've got some left over, which look really, really pretty on any kind of autumn themed project. Uh, or if you know, if you don't want to make the table runner right now, maybe just pick up the labels to to add to your fall projects. They're really pretty, and again, they coordinate really nicely with this um, table runner. And especially if you're going to give the table runner maybe as a gift. It's really nice to have those coordinating labels on the back just to tell the recipient, you know, who made it, when they made it. Or if you're like me and you don't remember what quilts you made, when you made them, you really need to have a label on the back so you remember that you actually made that quilt. I forget all the time when I made things. So that's the, um, the kit and the labels and the backing kits that we have available. So again, we have the early bird special on the kit. It's only $29.95, which is a great price to make this beautiful runner. Uh, now, you will have to add batting. The batting's not included, but I don't know if you're like me, you've probably got tons of batting. 
and uh, you can actually piece your batting scraps together. Piecing batting scraps together for a little project like this is like the perfect way to use up your batting. And uh, I actually have a tutorial on my blog about how to piece your batting scraps together. So when we're done, I will add that link to this Facebook description uh, so that you can see how to piece your batting scraps together. It's great for little projects. You probably, if you're doing like a king size quilt, I don't know if you have the patience to piece all of your scraps together um, for your batting, but for little projects, I piece my batting all the time. It's a great way to use up your batting. So let's see, what else did I want to talk to you about today? Um, oh, another thing, well, in a minute, I'm going to do the hand embroidery demonstration, but I mentioned to you that if you order during the early bird period, you also get another, you get a bonus. So here's what the bonus is. You're going to get a PDF of these really cute embroidery patterns, which are sized to go into this runner. So let's say you make the kit with the fabrics. Um, like I said, it's really fun and easy to put together. You decide you want to make another one and maybe you want to make it in like spring or summer colors. Here you can do, you're going to have patterns to do hand embroidery. And I'll just show those to you. Hand embroidery to make another runner if you want to with the pattern that's included. And you get the color guide as well. So you can use the color guide or you can just pick your own colors like you would like. So if you order during the early bird um, week, which is now through Wednesday, the October 5th, you're going to get a PDF with these patterns for free. And of course, you can use them for anything. Uh, if you are a member of the Art of Home Club, you have even more options. Just go on to the club website and pick any patterns which are six inches. So, um, you know, the collections, the monthly collections also have um, applique patterns. So all you need to do is find the applique patterns that are six inches. And honestly, you could make like so many different versions of this table runner. So imagine this done in like some really pretty spring or summer colors, summer, yeah, summer colors, and then do, you know, some embroidery for your blocks instead of the pre-printed panels. Uh, okay, so let's talk about I can some, the poll right now, so you want oh, to mention the poll? Okay, so we are going to have a poll, and what's the what's the question that what's we're... What's your experience with hand embroidery? Are, that's right. Mm -hmm. We were talking about what our question was going to be, and I, I kind of forgot what it was going to be. So we just want to know, before I start this hand embroidery demo, what is your experience with hand embroidery? Um, have you done it before? Have you never done it at all? Um, we do have... I'm going to do the demonstration here, but we also have some free tutorials, videos on YouTube, too, that you can watch if you would like. So... Um, oh, and if you get, and when you get your PDF patterns, you're also going to get the links to all of those videos just, you know, for your convenience so you can quickly go and watch the videos. And if you've never done the embroidery before, it's really easy to, to learn from those videos. So the first thing I'm, I think what I'll do is I'll talk about supplies first. Um, so we've got some needles here. We carry these in the shop. This is the Nifty Needle um, collection, and it comes with all kinds of, it's got binding, tapestry, sewing, embroidery, chunky, and applique needles. So if you would like to get an assortment of needles for all different kinds of sewing projects, you could pick this up. We're gonna put, I'm going to put all the links in the description so that it's really easy for you to find these things if you're interested. Um, another thing that you might want to pick up is the lightweight interfacing. Now, I use this on the back of my hand embroidery because it helps to hide all those like loose threads and knots and things like that. We'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, and here's, this is what the interfacing looks like. You just iron it onto the back of your fabric. You can see it's really thin. It's almost like tissue. It's very, very thin. Goes on the back. Now I forgot to add it to the back of this fabric that I'm going to show you in a minute for a demo. But what you would do is just iron this right to the back and then do your embroidery. And it's lightweight, so you just leave it on. You don't have to like, um, you know, sometimes if you're if you've done machine embroidery, you know, you cut away that excess interfacing. You don't you don't have to do that. You just leave it leave it just as it is and sew it right into your project the way it is. So that is the lightweight fusible interfacing. It's just my personal preference to use this. You don't have to. A lot of people don't, uh, but I love using the interfacing. I just think that um, it makes for a nicer result when your embroidery is finished. So we have that. Um, of course, you're going to need a hoop. You're going to need some thread. This is six strand embroidery floss. This is Orifil brand. You can use DMC, Anchor, uh, 
Cosmo, there's a lot of different brands of the six inch embroidery floss and I'll show you in a minute how to use that. Um, and then there's also, we've got, this is called a friction pen. Now, if you're going to be doing embroidery on a pre-printed panel, you don't need this. But let's say you're, you are doing an embroidery pattern that you have to transfer. Like you're gonna take one of your bonus patterns and you have to get it onto your background fabric what you'll do is just use your friction pen to trace it onto the fabric. And what's really nice about this is it disappears with heat. So once you're done doing your stitching, you iron over it and this just disappears and you don't have to worry about any straight lines. If you stitch a little bit outside of the line, you don't have to worry about being exactly perfect because this is just gonna disappear when you iron it. So this is what I use for tracing my patterns onto my fabric when I'm doing embroidery. This is just something that I really like using. I use a friction pen a lot. Um, and another thing I will talk about, not related to embroidery, but since we're talking about supplies, I've got my quarter inch seam marker here. And this is what it looks like in the package. We sell these in the shop. The, the runner does contain half square triangles. And it's really, really easy. You could use any kind of a ruler to do the half square triangle. You don't need anything special. However, I really, I think this makes it just a lot easier to do. And if you're interested in this, um, we're gonna put the link in the description. If you go over there, um, there's a video tutorial right there on the page for this, showing you how it's used. So um, you can get an idea of how it's used. It's good for, you can use it for flying geese too. So um, I, this is another just, it's a little gadgety thing. It's it, pretty inexpensive and I just think it makes it a lot easier to make those half square triangles. So that's again, an optional thing for making the project if you're interested in doing it. So, uh, yeah, I think all we have left really to talk about is our embroidery demo. If you've got any questions, just put them in the comments and we will get to them um, today. If I miss them, or if you're watching the replay and you have questions, go ahead and put them in the comments and we will try to get to them a little bit later. You just mentioned Dawn says she's working on the home in my heart. Oh, okay. I'm quilting it right now. Oh, okay. Dawn, I hope you liked putting that project together. That was our last kit that we did, the Home in My Heart. And that actually was machine applique. So um, if you like doing machine applique, that might be one that you want to pick up. That way it has a video tutorial for doing machine applique. So if you've never done hand uh, machine applique before and you want to try it, that's a really nice project to start with. Uh, so maybe afterwards we'll also put that link in the description so you can find it really easy. And Elizabeth says she loves the secret garden, secret fairy garden quilt behind you. Oh, thanks Elizabeth. So this is, yeah, in case any of you were wondering, this is our current block of the month that we're doing right now. I think, was it block three we just released? Mm -hmm. We just released block three on this. So if you haven't signed up for this yet, we'll, we'll put that in the description too. So we have to remember all the links that we need to add <laughs> later. We needed to add the block of the month, the home in my heart, and there was one more link we were going to add that now I don't remember what it was. I'll try to remember. If anybody remembers what it was in the beginning, let me know. Uh, we'll add those uh, links later. Right. Um, Someone had Elizabeth asking if the machine applique video is free. Yes, if you buy the kit. So it's not free. It's not free. It's it's a bonus if you buy the kit. So um, and actually, and you also get that video if you buy any of our machine applique kits. We also have. Um, the Valentine one was called Love You. And then we also had an, a cherry one called Oh Cherry. And all of those uh, come with the video included as a bonus. Uh, and all of those would be great projects for getting started with machine applique if you haven't done that yet. The quarter inch um, ruler is the other link. Quarter, uh, okay. No, I think I had already included that one. There's okay. something else. I don't know, maybe I'll think of it later. Um, but anyway, the block of the month, yeah, we're on block three, and I think that was, was it this one? Yes. Yes. This, all right, so the mushrooms were block number one, and then the strawberries, one, two, three, four little strawberry and a mushroom block, that was block two. Uh, this was block three, so we still have this one left. Block four is the one with the fairy. No, it's not showing up. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I mean, there it is. we'll put the link in, and you guys can go to the website if you haven't seen it yet. Um, we have kits available with this fabric. They are optional. You don't have to buy the fabric kit. If you just want the pattern, the pattern is completely free during the block of the month. So yeah, so we'll put the link in there. You can, if you want to click on over to that and see what the, uh, what our block of the month is all about this year, it's the secret fairy garden. So, um, 
hoop is another thing that you need for embroidery and I'm not sure if I mentioned that yep. but uh, so if we can do uh, a zoom in now okay. I'm going to show you so this is my panel like I said a lot of times when I'm doing hand embroidery I have just traced a pattern onto a piece of fabric uh, this is just a fun way now for our sample we just used it we just use the panel as is and it's it's very pretty just as is but if you really like doing the hand embroidery or you want to just kind of add a little pop to it what you can do is just do this is a simple back stitch it is like one of the very basic embroidery stitches and you just kind of do that along the edges so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my panel Hold on a second. Let, me just, let me zoom in a little bit more. okay and if you'll notice I've got two panels here because they're um, join if they're, they're pretty close together on the panel strip when you get it I recommend not cutting each one apart separately I recommend either leaving all four together or you know cutting just cutting it in half and having two um, it just makes it a little bit easier to have a little bit more fabric to work with to get in your hoop so what you're going to do if you're going to do these you want to do your embroidery before you cut out and trim your embroidery uh, your panel that's very important to remember don't trim your panel to six and a half inches on the line like the instructions tell you to do and then do the embroidery what's going to happen is you're going to have some distortion you're going to have a lot of fraying on the edges as you're doing your embroidery and just handling it so do your embroidery first and then press it and then come back and do your trimming so I'm going to put this in my hoop and I think I'll start with my brown so I'm going to put that section in the middle of the hoop and you just it's got this little screw on the top and you just tighten this up and you can kind of give it just a little tug you don't want to stretch the fabric but you do want it taut in the hoop so you know just give it a little tug tighten it up a little bit okay now let's talk about our embroidery floss I mentioned we were using a six strand floss so this is the way it will come either the orifice comes on a nice spool which I like because it doesn't uh, get tangled easily a lot of the other ones come in a skein so whichever one you're using you pull I don't know I like to work with about 15 inches at a time it's not so long that it will get tangled but you also don't want something so short that you're going to keep running out of thread and having to re-thread your needle that just gets uh, kind of frustrating after a while so you will notice that there are you can pull these apart there are six strands and usually embroidery instructions will tell you how many strands to use I normally use three strands unless it's a very very tiny detailed pattern and then I might use two or even one strand but for most of my projects I use three and you'll notice I'm going to pull these out um, so let's say we're let's uh, we're going to use three strands for this so I'm going to pull out three strands and then I'm going to put them back together now everybody always asks why do you pull them all apart and then put them back together again the reason is when they're coming off of the skein or the spool they're 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 twisted around each other um, you see as I start to pull some out because I only need three the three that are left you see how it's all kind of bumpy they're kind of bumpy and uneven if you pull them all out separately and then put them back together again they're going to be nice and smooth and not twisted on each other so you're going to get your three strands and just line them up and I normally have a whole bunch of um, needles ready to go like I will sit and I will spend a while just doing all of my threads threading a whole bunch of needles that way I don't have to keep stopping to rethread my needle when I run out so you see how that's quite a bit smoother than that one that other one that I just showed you so you would just thread your needle then so I've got a needle started with my brown this is three strands now let's talk about how to start your embroidery traditionally you don't put a knot on your thread lots of people will tell you grandma will tell you don't knot your thread um, however I've seen more and more people putting a knot on their thread I just use a really simple small overhand knot and in fact I'll do one for you just to show you so it's just a simple overhand knot you make a loop you don't need some big giant knot 
it's just a small knot and that will that will keep your thread from pulling through so let me just cut off my excess that's another reason why i like to use that interfacing on the back it hides it hides all of your knots and extra thread tails and stuff now if you don't want to use the knot what you can do is when you start your stitching you leave a tail and then you kind of weave the tail on the back into your stitches as you go so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to come up and then I'm, it's called a back stitch because we're going to go forward and then we're going to go back so i'm going to take a little this could be a little bit this could be a little bit tighter in my hoop but i'm going to try to work with it the way it is so i'm going to go forward i'm going to go down and then i'm actually going to bring my needle up for the next one right in front of that and try to keep as you practice you'll get better at keeping your making your stitches the same length so there you see i've made my first stitch and i'm ready to make the second stitch by going back that's why it's called a back stitch and you go back into the same hole actually i forgot to put my glasses on and i really need some magnifying glasses for this so then i'm going to take my needle and put it back in the same hole where that first stitch ended and i'm going to do the same thing where i come up in front of it and I use, you can't see it, but I'm using my fingernail underneath to kind of give my needle something to push against. You can use a thimble if you don't have nails. And okay? So, I mean, it's that easy. That is a back stitch. And what you can do is you can just do the entire design. I've gone all, all around the, the lines of the letters, the outlines of the designs so like here you can see i've done the little leaf veins in the big leaf and the little leaf if i was doing this sunflower i would probably do like the veins in the petals and the leaves and the little detail on the bird's wing you can really just just do as much or as little detail as you want if you wanted to just do the outlines you could do that too so I mean that's it that's how easy it is go back into the hole and then come up forward and if you watch the YouTube videos um, I mean, you can come back to this video and watch it again um, or you can go to the YouTube my YouTube videos and see how to do it so that's it so I would do the whole thing so now let's just talk about how to end your stitching we talked a little bit about beginning so what I would just do when I'm done I take this and I just weave it back, back and forth through the stitches that I did. I usually go forward a couple times and then I will come back a couple times and just weave it into those stitches on the back. And then I just cut it pretty close so that there's no tail there. That's it, that's all it takes. So. That is how you use some hand embroidery to embellish your panels. And again, you don't have to if you don't have time and you want a quick weekend project. The, the, the runner is really pretty with the panels just the way it is. But if you've got a little time and you want to spend some time stitching, just get some embroidery floss and sit and stitch your panels. So um, let's just check back one more time and see if there were any additional questions. There was a question about... Have my fall mud. Could you use pinking shears when you cut the panel when you were about to embroider so that you would have less fraying? Um, you could, but I will tell you the way that they are going to come in the kit you don't really have room see there's not they're kind of close together there's not a lot of room for pinking so as long as you don't trim them on the line before you do your embroidery really any fraying that you have that happens like you can see the fraying here there's still enough there's still enough border so i don't think so the short answer is you can but i don't think it's necessary um the other thing is if you trim with with um pinking shears you're going to have less fabric to get into the hoop and you need to have fabric 
all around to get into this hoop. Now, if you're having a hard time getting your fabric into the hoop um, because you just don't have enough, another thing you could do is just take some scrap fabric and sew it to these edges. Just use a big fat basting stitch with your machine. Sew it to the edges and it'll give you a little bit of extra. And then when you're done, just either undo those basting stitches or just cut it right off. And it gives you, it'll give you a little bit of extra edge of fabric to fit into the hoop. That's another trick you could do to get it in your hoop. Uh, recommendations on doing this technique on the Secret Fairy Garden? Okay, so, um, uh, you know what? I have, a, I have a square that I did, and I meant to bring it with me, and I forgot. I did do one of the panels as a demo, and it would be the same exact thing. I think it was a little flower one. So what I did was I just took some green floss, and I did like the edges, the outline of the stems, and then I did the outline of the leaves, and then I did like, you can see there's a dotted leaf for the vein. I just did the veins as a running stitch. So basically, it's the same thing, you just outline. And I used matching thread. So I used green for the stems and the leaves, used some pink here, some of this peachy corally color here. And then um, I used French knots for the little dots on the butterflies. Um, trying to think of for this for the little um, strawberry you could just use some little straight stitches for the little black lines which are the seeds on the strawberry so it's the same exact technique that you could use for the block of the mud panels and darn I had that panel and I was gonna bring it to show you guys and I <laughs> forgot uh, yeah Becky says great idea to do on the fairy garden while waiting for the next block yeah there you go yeah and it just adds a little you know a little extra something to it so i will show you one more time i'll show you this so this is our runner it's 18 and a half by 54 and a half uh order it between now and october 5th and you get the early bird special um the kit comes with all of your fabrics for the top the panel and the binding so you can oh piecing the batting that was the other oh, the other um, link that we were going to put in the description when we're done okay so you could use your scraps of batting for for um your table runner uh let's see it comes with the panels and then we also have the matching or coordinating quilt labels which are really pretty you could use them on any fall project we've got the backing available separately in three different colors the really pretty teal, the light orange, or the berry purple. So you can pick whichever backing you like. Or, you know, if you've got some fabric at home that you want to use for the backing, that's fine. Um, the backing is optional. And I'll show you one more time what the, the label looks like on the back with the teal, the teal backing with the label. And again, I just wrote my information with a permanent marker. And I wrote it first on a piece of paper and then I traced it. Because what you don't, you don't want to make a mistake, you know, just kind of freehanding it onto your label with a permanent marker because then you're you're kind of stuck with it. So put it on paper first and then all you have to do is trace it and you can get it exactly perfect just the way you want it. Okay, do we have any more questions? Um. So I just put the poll results up. Most people are moderately experienced. Okay, all right. But so it sounds 14 like 14% have never done it before. Okay, so if you have never done it before, you might want to go check out those YouTube videos and um, maybe just watch again about how to do the hand embroidery. Um, if you have already done hand embroidery, I, I hope that you are enjoying it and that you like it. I really like it. I find it to be really relaxing. It's just a nice thing to do, you know, Sometimes if the weather is nice in the summer, I'll sit outside and sit outside or now as it's getting cooler, uh, I will sit and watch some of my favorite TV shows at night and do my embroidery and uh, that's it. Okay, well have a really great day. Thanks so much for joining me and we will get those other extra links in the description as soon as possible. You can watch this replay later if you would like to come back to it and uh, that's it. If you think of any questions afterwards, you can write to us at comments at JacquelineSteens.com and we will email you back or you can just put it in the comments. So, okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.